So I've been trying to <laughs> yeah, get I you on here sometimes. Yeah. All righty. Well, we're jumping into Pro Draft immediately. Um, so we got big bands coming out. So Evil Geniuses banding out Nidalee, Thresh, and Graves. Uh, two of the champions are cream of the crop for uh, Hyper here. So it's it's definitely not uncommon to see that. We got Seraphine, Camille, and Hecarim. Yeah, I just feel like these are just standard bands against these two. <laughs> you probably can't see this unless I gave you the right the pro draft. Or did I not? Yep. Okay, just making sure. So we have Olaf and Kindred. What What do you think of these two? Which one do you like better coming out of the teams? Yeah, probably. currently Olaf's pretty strong right now. Uh, definitely can be scary for Kindred if she can't manage to cut it out. I do like the Lulu pick to help buff up the Kindred, though. Yeah, I do like the Lulu, too. I think it's a lot better just to kind of just buff up any of the team members. Especially since you're going to probably be running two ADCs with this. <clears throat> and Evil Genius is rounding it out with Senna and Galio, so. Going to get a little bit of CC and healing in there. I see you also locking in the Kaisa, which has been a very popular pick right now. Um, and should pair well with the Lulu kind of. Being able to buff up the jungler and the ADC. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a lot of the big things we kind of want to see come out. Especially since uh, you have Lulu, who's just going to do a lot. And then you have Galio on the other side, who's just going to kind of set up a lot for Senna and Olaf. Just with the... Um, Stand United. And so really good. here, I think ISC is probably going to need to be looking for some front line at this point because they're facing the Olaf Galio who are, even if Senna wants to sit back, those two probably are going to be running in. And I, ISU, even if they have some ability to kite back, need something to kind of be a little beefier. And Evil Genius is recognizing that and, and banning the Ornn and Renekton. Yeah, I mean, when you also have Aurelia and Greg, it's taken out too. I mean, those are also just good picks right now that they're not necessarily tanky, but they're also just really good bruisers right now. So Really good bruisers here, and Ice, you're going to have to be picking one of their solo lanes and then saving the other. Might save mid lane for the counter pick. Uh, but one of them's going to be getting blinded here, regardless. Let's see what they want to pick. The Zillion. Ooh, interesting. I don't know if that was an auto lock in or if that I was the pick. Have not heard anything. So <laughs> it must be the pick. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was going. The counter was going down here, and it will lock in a random one. But I guess we'll we'll see. They have Syndra, okay. Locking in the Syndra, so Evil Genius is kind of have a... They they actually don't have a ton of damage, but uh, when you bring everyone together, it's a pretty strong team fighting comp. Yeah, I mean, you got good layer CC between Shen and Galio, and then you also have Olaf who could just run in and just slow everyone down to set up for Senna's... Um, W, I can't think of it offhand. Um, and then, you know, Syndra's uh, ball uh, burst combo, so. And then the, the last pick, Gangplank, coming in here. This was a popular kind of counter to Shen. Uh, it doesn't necessarily completely smash it in lane, but Gangplank can kind of farm, and he's able to match the Shen global with his ult as well while he continues pushing, so... 
I'm curious to see still if the zillion was the the pick or not. Yeah, I mean, so so think of it this way. So if it is the pick, which I mean, we're already going into client. So let's see. You used to find it. Not, oh, of course, I hit the wrong one. Here's the right one. Oh. If it is the zillion, uh, while ISU didn't pick up any front line, they're going to be pretty annoying to deal with. To, yeah. to dive into them. That looks like someone had a bug. Um, yeah, basically, I, I look at um, for this. I mean, you have Lulu who could just ult, knock everyone up. You have Bunny coming out of her as well, too. So a lot of people are going to get silenced and not be able to do too much. Um, you have the annoying shield coming out of her as well as you have Zillion speed up with bombs being attached to them as well as I know it's just having that res is also just very nice that just kind of have so yeah and i mentioned evil geniuses doesn't really have a huge amount of damage you know they don't have something like the the kaisa to specifically dps and, and the kindred could cause them problems later if they're not able to cc the kindred down before she can ult <laughs> Yeah, and I agree. I mean, there's there's not much that they can, I think, really do damage-wise, like, right away. I think the only one that's really going to be consistent is, like, Syndra and Olaf, until Senna starts finally scaling with her souls. Once she has that, then it's going to be a, a whole different story, but until we get there, it's going to be probably heavily favored just playing on the Syndra, trying to set up a lot of gigs for her, get her ahead, and see what they can do. Yeah, getting the Cinder ahead because the range Cinder provides will uh, be pretty scary for ISU who are already, while they're all ranged, it also means they're really squishy and if they get hit by anything, it's pretty scary. And Olaf's also, as long as he has his alt up, is going to be pretty scary because that takes away a lot of the tools that ISU would usually have to peel, such as slows, and Olaf's going to just ignore those and run it exactly i mean that that's the thing is when you have a nice ultimate that can basically with ragnarok you could just take out anything that you want i mean it's it's kind of really annoying because then once you're tanky and built up more or just say you go for flat damage you're just going to do more of what you want and everything and you know it's it's something that not everyone's going to be able to handle so especially the squishy since they did favor taking a more squishier comp between four out of the five lanes. So we'll see how Olaf tries to pressure that that little bit more in that case to see what's going to be the better move, essentially. <clears throat> yeah, and I really don't mind the, the squishier comp. It gives you a lot of uh, damage dealers, really, uh, damage threats, because Evil Genius's comp is really focused on killing a single person uh, at least early on into the fight, and uh, while, while ISC that's pick... really powerful, you've got Kindred, you've got Zillion who can completely stop that pick, and then you've got a lot of damage to follow up with uh, if ISU doesn't completely get burst down at the start. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing is like if you can play around. The right way with it. I mean, having a switch your comp, you could definitely win easy, no problem or anything like that. I think the big issue is, is I mean, you have Galio and everyone else, like we said, that once they do a team fight, it's going to be a lot harder to do. Because you could just have Shen just go in on Olaf. Olaf's chasing someone down. You have Shen go in and taunt. And then on it. top of that, you have Galio just coming in with um, Stan United. And yeah, it's just... And that really might be the CC that... Evil geniuses need to prevent Kindred from ulting uh, and and find the pick that they need to make their comp work. Right, or even if it's not, say, necessarily taking Kindred's ult out of the equation, keeping them in the ult, so then that way, no matter what, they can't just take the heal and then just run away. They have to be CC locked, so that, that way, no matter what, even though that heal went off, doesn't mean it kept you alive, you know? throughout the absolutely fight. and 
And if you have Galio ulting in, he's going to have the taunt following up after that. And as I, I mentioned, I just use a squishy comp and they really don't have that much hard CC to, to stop Olaf or any of the others running at them. They are trying to peel back with slows from barrels, Lulu slowing. And if EG is able to get on top of them, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to survive. Exactly. I think it's it's going to be kind of an issue. I mean, we'll see how it plays out, though. I mean, I, I like both sides of kind of what they're going for. I like the whole scaling thing that you kind of have coming out of technically both sides because um, you have uh, Hyper being uh, scaling with Kindred trying to go for her souls or um, her stacks, I should say. And then you have the souls coming out of Senna there on Shiro. So we'll see how that kind of plays out as to who gets to their their stack point faster, essentially, and see who dominates more in that aspect. <clears throat> yeah, and I definitely think that Olaf will have to get rolling, though, because there definitely is a heavier scaling aspect on ISU, and if Olaf isn't starting to, to get some kills, get some pressure early, then he's not going to be able to run in like he wants to, even if he has Shen and Galio to back him up. He's just not going to be strong enough. Exactly. I mean, he's he's not going to be essentially in that case. And what when he doesn't get ahead that little bit early, or even get balanced out by that mid game, you know, it's going to take him too long to get to late game essentially. And once they're already at late game coming out of ISU, it's just going to be a huge mess to deal with. And because of the fact that. Pause. I will share screen with you in a second. Don't know why it's not zooming out. Um, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna have to see. There's a, a lot of things are gonna have to happen. So, once those things happen, then we'll kind of know what's going on more so. But until then, um, I kind of want to see what happens first yeah. to see if like we get maybe um, an early kill coming out of uh, either side. Uh, whether it being that Olaf um, is a part of it or not, or he gets, um, you know, solo kill. Mm -hmm. I am uh, hyper there if he gets the kill onto uh, mid or top lane, because uh, I think it's going to be a little harder to gank bottom right away. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and you've got the Zillion going bottom and the Lulu sitting mid, and the Lulu mid has been a previous, not necessarily counter to Syndra, but kind of an attempt to neutralize the lane. So if if Drew can stay safe from getting flashed on or anything, uh, kind of prevent Syndra from snowballing, and you had mentioned earlier, Olaf may be trying to get Syndra ahead, and the Lulu may be able to kind of uh, prevent some of that snowball from happening. <laughs> yeah, and I think that could definitely happen with Lulu. I think Lulu is just one of those better ones that it's a great flex pick that could be taken to any lane that can either uh, be very destructive and just annoy people to all ends, or it could be something that's just, okay, I'm just playing to be the support bot um, that will come into team fights, be able to help out, you know, just to get our two hyper carries going that little bit more, and that's pretty much it. So. Yeah, and we're not seeing any level one action here. A little trade in the top lane, but uh, Evil Genius is not going for any level one. They did have Olaf and some CC if they had wanted to, but everyone fanning out and, and staying safe here. Yeah, it looks like everyone's just going to play it safe. I mean, that's fine. No, no problem or anything like that. Yeah, and, and something to watch here uh, as we get into it is really where Kindred ends up going. Kindred would like to be aggressive here, but if she runs into Olaf, it's probably not going to be a fight she wants to take because she's not going to have Cryo in any of these lanes. The Syndra is going to be pressuring Lulu, and, and bot lane's already shoving in. So uh, where, where Kindred kinds, tries to go, uh, if they try to contest the mark or something, will be something to watch for as well. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be the big thing, is who's going to contest 
Like if there is there really a contest? Um, kind of essentially with it, just because of the fact that um, sometimes people might be behind, or you look at Shen. Shen's getting heavily treated on right now. Like you yeah, mentioned, Shen, it. Uh, <laughs> Gangplank's probably looking to do a cheater recall here, so he he's gonna be looking to crash uh, this wave in here. And Shen traded pretty heavily, and I'm not sure he's gonna be able to stop him. Shen also taunts in place there, so. Gangplank's gonna get a free back off here, and he's got the lane exactly where he wants. Olaf's pathing down, so he's not gonna have to worry about getting ganked either. So he, he's having a great time top lane. As Shen is struggling to to keep his health up. Yeah, I mean, I th that's gonna be the big thing is, okay, how, how are you gonna be able to keep your health up when you're going uh, grasp and when you're not going to be able to really kind of go in on Gangplank. Gangplank's the one that, like I said, he's going to poke from range. I mean, what, what's the kind of the point in taking grasps is kind of what I feel like. I know it's the move to go, but you never know kind of what's going to be coming about. <clears throat> yeah, and we've got both junglers pathing down here. The mark spawns on the bot side, so Olaf's going to be able to secure that. You've got the bot and top cryo for evil geniuses. Nothing ISC is going to be able to do. And Olaf will likely run across and, and try to grab the second scuttle as well. Uh, as Kendra just does a full clear. And Lulu getting pushed out as well here. Taking a reset off as Olaf crosses mid. And Drew's using his TP back to lane as well here. Uh, so there is a TP advantage for Syndra, but he was able to pick up the the early magic resist. Shen taunts in place there, uh, still getting pressured. Olaf's coming up to help him shove the wave in. They really need some help resetting as well. And that's going to be Zillion getting taken down. Nice CC by the Gallia and Senna. They're still going in. Disconnector has to flash out. And and that's some heavy trading going down to the bot lane with Zillion going down. And it looks like they're going to be able to shove this in. So Nausicaa getting a little beat up by the, the Senna and Gallia who put out a little bit more damage than, than he expected. And they're even staying for a little mo more here. So... Uh, you know, you really don't want your Zillion going down too early. Uh, they're going to start getting poked out here, but uh, hopefully it'll still be manageable for them. Yeah, I mean, because we were looking bot or we were looking top and we thought, hey, you know, that first kill was going to go to uh, ShamWow here uh, to uh, Serdi because I was thinking, I'm like, all right, like, I know he's, he's definitely doing a lot of good trades here. And then you go pan down to bot and it's like, Okay, oh no, that's not a fight they want to be taking, and then it, it's just, you know, that little bit of soul wall effect like we talked about, that, you know, if you can start poking out people a little bit early and everything like that with going that kind of poke bot lane they're doing there with uh, Senna and, um, why am I blanking right now, um, Galio, uh, that's uh, going to be one of those things that it, it's not fun, and normally Galio is weaker early on just because he's not, like, super tanky. Um, so you would think that they'd be able to kind of trade a little bit back, but unfortunately not in the case when you have a zillion who's... Yeah, and uh, some interesting things to, to look at is is this is the Fasting Senna, so Galio is taking a lot of the CS, so, uh, you know, he gets his back off and he's going to have a few more items than he might normally have than, than if it was just the regular support Galio. And another thing is that if you look at the summoner spells in the bot lane, Kaisa has cleanse, so there was no heal to come through for Zillion outside of his exhaust going down uh, while, while Senna had the heal when they took that fight. Which made it a little bit more difficult, and, and then you saw the Zillion going down. And we actually saw earlier uh, in, in the top lane, Gangplank was still heavily, heavily trading onto the Shen. There's not really a, a giant CS lead there, uh, but, but uh, Gangplank's definitely where he wants to be here. Yeah, and I, I know the big thing that we kind of see right now is we got 
It was a Kindred stack just came up right now on the Scuttle in Top River. So we noticed that Olaf already pinged on the question mark there, thinking, okay, is someone there, is someone not? We get the same ping coming out now of Kindred. So we kind of have to see what's going to happen here. I think it's going to go to Olaf, to be honest, because they rotated that a little bit quicker while she's trying to take red. Yeah, and still looking for the crab, but nothing going to happen here. Uh, and it looks like they'll go back to their respective lanes. So preventing the Kindred from getting any stacks early here. And Galia looking for a taunt. Not going to quite get in range. Trading more on Senna. Just going to end up being some trades back. Going back into the top lane. ShamWow still putting down the pressure on Surdy. Uh, getting hit by multiple barrels here in a row. So... Surdy picking up the Bramble Vest, but it's not going to help when he's getting hit by by so much in a row there. And it's going to be making it difficult for Olaf to come in and help him even. But uh, he's he's starting to... Uh, ShamWow is starting to pick up a CS lead. Uh, however, Drew in the mid lane, he said he's trying to neutralize the lane, going down a bit in CS. Uh, kind of... Trying to keep it even the best he can. Yeah, I mean it's Lulu, so it, it's kind of like if you took Galio mid, they're they're not um, super heavy on uh, keeping that wave management very well. Uh, they're looking at trying to make sure that you know, can I survive? Can I take out that Syndra or whoever I'm going against right now to make sure that they can not do as as much CS. You know, try to take away CS, but also just trying to take away either get. Yeah, um, Sidra or uh, Olaf coming in, you know, trying to do some cheeky business on each other. So yeah, and Shamwell looking for a trade into the turret on Surdy, but he's gonna have Olaf running into the lane, and he's probably gonna be going down here. Got a little over ambitious. I think he thought he could sh kill Shen under the turret, uh, maybe with his ult, and realized Shen was a little too tanky with the bramble, a little too high, and and wasn't quite able to get the wave shoved in, and he goes down to Olaf, no wards down to help him out. Uh, so, Gangplank doing well early, but uh, getting taken down kind of makes it a little bittersweet for his CS lead. Yeah, and even though he does have that CS lead, that kind of does happen, I feel like, sometimes with Shen, just because as Unless Shen's into a extremely great matchup where he beats out that other top laner, he's gonna usually be behind that little bit just because usually those top laners that beat him are very good at CSing. So because of the, that, you kind of lose that lead. But once you get a gank, I mean, you kind of get back into the game that, that a little bit quicker and easier. Whether you get the kill or the assist, and you know, that kill participation does give you that little bit of a boost to start being that little bit more. Not dominant, but getting back into the, the, the rhythm of things, you know. And we've got ISU grouping up for the Herald here. Evil Genius is looking to see if they can contest. Tomio walking in on Olaf. Galio pops the ult as well. Kindred has to ult early. Galio looking for the taunt as Olaf barely stands alive. And that's Zillion going down as well without managing to ult. Shambwow finds himself in a difficult spot here and goes down to Syndra. So... ISU had almost gotten that Herald. They they wanted the Herald, they wanted the fight to some degree, and, and it kind of gets turned around on them with the Galio popping the ult to join, making it a 5v4. Uh, Kaisa and Galio had been fighting in the bot lane while the others roamed there, and Galio shoves the wave in and is able to roam up, uh, making a good fight for evil geniuses, really. Yeah, and the big thing that I probably didn't notice um, early on was he took TP. So he TP'd to that ward there in the pit. And because of that, he was able to get that a little bit quicker uh, ultimate off because of... Uh, if he's down lane down there, he could get chased by Kaisek. Kaisek could have killed him then uh, in that process. And I believe he TP'd at the tower there. So because of that, that gets him that little bit better uh, movement. Get it setting up that little bit more, like I said. I know he's got to go on one of them, whether it's Shen or Olaf. And basically, once he does that, he can set up for Shiro to kind of just start blasting people down. Um, as well as you're going to get uh, Aspect doing a lot of the, the orb management, as well as just setting up those perfect stuns on the people. So, 
Uh, unfortunately, not the way Redbirds wanted to go, but, you know, it's something that uh, as they kind of keep going on, we'll see uh, as they learn more of the patterns that they're doing. <clears throat> yeah, and Olaf able to take down the Cloud Dragon as well. That's two already stacked up with the Mountain coming in. And he, he's already got the Gore Drinker, so this is what we said Olaf needed to do. He needed to get things rolling, uh, get himself ahead, and he's already got the Gore Drinker, so he, he's going to be pretty scary when he's got the Galio and Shen to back him up. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously going to be very scary. I mean, that's that's one of those things that, I mean, this is this is why I hate going against him. <laughs> uh, but it but it's always something kind of to deal with. So Tambo getting a lot of Ooh. trees coming out of him right now. Yeah, Sturdy is going in and he wants the kill. He tries to flash to get the Q through. Hyper's already there. I don't think Hyper has his ult up. Not quite. Lulu's going to show up from Drew, and that's going to be Cinder flashing in. Shamwow able to take down Surdy, but Aspect flashing in for the kill on Gangplank. So they end up going one for one there. Surdy really wanted the kill and, and wasn't quite able to finish it fast enough as Hyper came out of the jungle. Drew's able to move up before Aspect. And a, a little one, one for one there, but they are able to drop the Herald mid right before plates go down and take down the turret because of that. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it this way, too, in that 1v1, Aizu comes out a little bit on top because you look at uh, Shen and Sidra both flash to even try to get that kill onto Gangplank there with Shamwell. Like, if you're doing that, I mean, sure, yes, you, you get that kill. You kind of get that setup going, like you said, for uh, mid lane where you have the Rift Hero coming down, getting those plates right before it ends. So... In the end, it, is, is it a great move that they have there? No, but you look at it, there's still sums taken off the board, so that way when fights like this happens right now. Um, <laughs> and they're looking for Nausicaa under the turret, pops his ult, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to save him. Shamwild does throw the ult down as well, but Tomio just walks in and picks up the kill, and now they're looking on Disconnector, has to pop the ult since he stayed close to Olaf. Galar getting a big taunt in, but Kindred throws down the ult. Be close. Galios tries to ult, but goes down. That's gonna be disconnector in. Mist getting taken down there. Uh, maybe diving a little bit too far there, but it ends up working out for them. And evil geniuses are able to continue snowballing their lead here. Yeah, because if you look at it, you, you have what Racino died there. Um, or I should say Noska died there. Uh, yeah, disconnector died. So technically, it's a two for one essentially the situation so it's not horrible but yes they did chase i think a little too hard to get everything that they needed there i think if they pretty much could have just bullied out this connector make them kind of default the hyper there and then just take the turret you know they still would have had the same outcome they could have still gotten potentially another kill uh whether it was on this deck or someone else um but i, th I think the more safer play would have been just all right push them out off the tower kill Zillion there, and then, you know, get the tower. It's simple and easy. Yeah, and even if it was diving a little too far, ISU really not able to punish there. Uh, the Gangplank ult was kind of used early to try and save Zillion, who, who really didn't get anything done. He just died after he came through his ult, and Gangplank and Shen going back at it. Sham Wow getting chunked up by Surdy. He's got the tab, he got the Bramble already, and I don't think this is a fight that Sham Wow can take anymore. No, definitely can't. Oh. I mean, you already look at the items coming out of Sindra. She's already got basically her tiers almost yeah. fully stacked. You that got was the the... So, I mean, Gangplank, Zillion going down again and, and really, uh, you know, it, it's tough now, right? You've lost two turrets and, and the dragon's coming up. So, Gangplank getting bullied. And Zillion just not quite hitting the mark here, uh, getting killed early, and now it's it's tough. You've got all these carries for ISU, and none of them are going to be able to survive. And Zillion getting having to use his ult on himself as he gets killed by Syndra. Sturdy coming in manages to taunt down Hyper before, and he doesn't even have the ult available, so. This is looking like a stomp here, really. Uh, nothing that 
ISU can do here. We said they they didn't really pick any front line or anything, and Drew having a flash out, disconnector being countered by the Galio, and and that's disconnector being just deleted again by Syndra and. Uh, Drew has not died here in the mid lane, you know, he, he was really doing his job. Yeah, I agree. He's, he's definitely been doing his job of basically not dying, trying to still be relevant in getting the CS that you can, but being able to still try to uh, bunny out someone. Like I said, whether it's uh, you got to target the two tanks, of whether it's Galio or Shed in that case, or you look at, hey, you know what, um, say Syndra is a little too close, you know, as long as you take out one of them, Basically, you kind of could manage that CC a little bit better, and then you could try to chain your, your ultimate there coming out of Lulu to knock up people as well as make sure that everyone kind of stays alive in different things. But and Shamma having a flash here uh, to get away from Olaf and Syndra walking at them. And and really, you, you've seen Gangplank's early lead completely diminished here as they just keep pressuring him and using their prio. Galio looking for a taunt here. Goes in on to Hyper. Hyper holding onto the ult. Syndra TP's in as well. And they're gonna try to walk out of this. Galio going back in. Syndra flashes and is able to take down Disconnector before Hyper can pop the ult. Hyper manages to flash out. Pops the emote. Nausicaa trying to get the bomb down to save Hyper is not quite able to get the double stun there. I don't think he had thrown the second one, so... More... more members of ISU falling. Yeah, and... Like, I think like we said about Draft, I think I think the part of the issue is... I don't, I don't know if, if it's... Maybe that we needed to not have Zillion, or maybe not have Gankplank necessarily, or, or the, the Kindred in the aspect. But if they had one tank somewhere across the board, I think it would help manage things a little bit easier uh, it doesn't have to be like could have been like leona because uh, leona wasn't banned there so i look at that could have helped make sure the game was uh, well, well there's not much to say yeah. there. <laughs> there, 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 there. <laughs> well, trying to push up and and you've got to just feel feel pretty miserable here if you're isu uh, you've kind of dug yourself in a hole here evil geniuses sitting on soul point and you never really got your kindred rolling and trying to look for her. the Syndra, but the double ult from Galio and Shen goes down. Nice triple stun from the the Zillion bombs, but Serdi wants more running in. Pops the W and Tomia throws an axe over the wall. Galio flashing with the taunt gets hyper in Nausicaa. There's Nausicaa going down as well. Hyper is staying. Gets ulted by Syndra on the side. Hops over the wall. That's Tomia flashing over the wall. There's Shen flashing over the wall as well. <laughs> Trying to kite out, but... Serdi not sure if he can take the fight. Waiting for backup from Tomio, and, and that's going to be... Olaf throwing the axe down, popping the ult. And, and ISU falling again. Yeah, I, I unfortunately there, I mean, you look at that, it was just not one of those things that I think they can't really take certain fights right now for the fact that Galio could just come in at any time, doesn't have to have his ultimate knock up anyone. He basically just needs to be there to be that extra body to help stall for Shen, as well as Syndra, as well and as... Really, and, and Evil Genius is trying to finish down the Baron able to secure it as Serdi walks around the corner and, and looking back on that previous fight that led to this Baron the Galio and Shen got used at the start there so really for ISU I, I don't know if you were really gonna get a better fight there and just showing how far behind they were uh, Hyper played it pretty well and and there was really nothing they could do they couldn't get anyone low enough uh, to really accomplish anything yeah, unfortunately, people are low enough. I mean, once you're behind, you know, your damage is a little bit lacking in that case. Um, but especially here, I mean, you're not having to use Blast Plan to get out. You know, kind of a thing. It's kind of backing themselves in the corridors that they don't need to be doing. They need to just, you know, get some CS, just 
ward what they can, you know, obviously safely. We don't want to. Oh no. <laughs> they find Nausicaa trying to back in the jungle and throwing the Herald down. Galio able to get the taunt on Drew. Drew trying to flash out, but gets taken down by <laughs> Aspect. So this might be the final push for Evil Geniuses. Taking down Gangplank as well. Shamwell falls. And and you have to think that that Evil Geniuses are going to be able to use the Herald to end the game here. Hyper trying to get the kill on Senna and isn't even able to pick that up. That's the fasting Senna. So it so looks like it's going to be Gang 1 as the Herald kills the first Nexus turret. You've got the Shen and Galio ults coming in. And that's going to be the first game going over to Evil Geniuses in a dominant victory, 24 kills to 2. That did pretty much almost had basically a little bit over a kill a minute, essentially, there. So, uh, yeah, a great, great win going to Evil Geniuses right there, you know. And uh, we got a game two still coming up right now, coming out of this league. So hopefully we'll see... Uh, a little bit better out of ice this time. <laughs> yeah, and, and while you saw that was pretty one-sided, uh, that was kind of the comp that ISU had picked. You know, if, if that comp had been able to survive, then suddenly they have a bunch of carries that are really hard to kill. So <clears throat> it fell behind and it looked one-sided, but it, it was definitely something where if they had made it later into the game, it was very playable and may have not looked so one-sided. Right, and I think the big issue is you didn't get your kinder going. If you got your kinder going that that little bit more and played around it that little bit better, then you would have had the stacks coming in more and she could have been more of a threat in that case um, where she kind of didn't really get to do too much of a gank bot and she couldn't really get some Orleans kind of snowballing. So because of that, I don't, she kind of fell behind also in that aspect. Um, yeah, and... Nausicaa falling down early uh, really hurt Shamwell Wow as well because he, he was doing great on the Gangplank against the Shen and <clears throat> Disconnector and Nausicaa ended up kind of losing without any any Olaf pressure which then let Olaf kind of sit top and, and pressure the Gangplank who was really trying to win pretty hard on his own. Yeah, I mean, and... and when we look at it, he, he was doing well. And because of that, I know sometimes some, some jugglers like to opt more going towards top side. Sometimes they go more towards bot side. I think it kind of depends on your situation. Like if you need to get your bot ahead, sure. Obviously you go bot. Um, but if your bot's doing fine, then you could go gank either top or mid in that case. And with, when you're looking at Lulu, Lulu is kind of one of those more safe picks that you can't really gank early uh, because she can just bunny you. She's going to bunny one of you, and, and then nothing's going to happen. But until you hit six on Olaf, uh, where you could take out the excuse me, the bunny in that aspect with the Ragnarok, then yes, you could have no problem or anything like that. So that's going to be kind of the move that you have to look at is, okay, who do I CC at this point? Because it's already level six. Sindri is either going to burst me down, or I have Olaf chasing me no matter what. So you kind of, you kind of have to pick your poison when it comes to Lulu. <clears throat> yeah, and ISU kind of kind of going for a greedy comp as well. There were a lot of members uh, who kind of wanted to just farm, right? You've got Gangplank who wants to sit in a side lane. Uh, Kindred trying to just, uh, who can be aggressive, but trying to stack up the marks and, and farm as well. And, and so you saw, even though Drew was able to stay even, uh, <laughs> there was no one for him to buff up since they had all fallen behind then. Right, and when, when you fall behind in that aspect, it's kind of like, all right, so so now what am I going to do kind of a thing because you you don't want to fall behind, but you also don't want, you know, a super big lead coming out of um, Evil Geniuses either just because of the fact that you look at, like we said, all of had to get ahead somehow. It, it was as quick as I thought it was going to be because usually you want to get it that little bit sooner there than I think to what that was like six or eight minutes, maybe even later than that, when they got their first kill on a uh, gangplank there. Uh, so because of that, 
you're kind of delaying yourself a little bit there. But once he had that, he just they both just started rolling. I mean, you you kind of look at it and you're like, oh crap, now Shen's going. Now now we have Olaf going. Okay, now Olaf's getting beefy and tanky. Oh no, this is not fun. I don't want to be chased down by a guy that's going to keep throwing axes at me <laughs> because he's got full mana right now. Like. <laughs> Yeah, and they kind of, Evil Geniuses was able to hit the tipping point where their tanks were a little too tanky. They were against a really high damage team, and and they ended up just getting a little too tanky for ISU to deal with. And, and then you saw it just snowballed all the way uh, with really nothing ISU was able to do after a certain point. Yeah, once they weren't be able to... Do some things. I think. I think that was kind of the big issue. Is okay. Like, how how do we kind of pull ourselves back together? And the problem is, is I think they got, like you said, that early kill on Zillion didn't help them in bot lane. And because he started falling behind in that aspect, he couldn't start leveling up people that little bit quicker. He couldn't get uh, more of his damage out that he needs to do. Uh, he couldn't, unfortunately, keep uh, people alive a little bit longer. Um, so that's the a little bit unfortunate aspect in, in the case of when you sometimes take Zillion. Zillion's kind of like that either you do very well or um, I, I look at it, it's like very average, you know, kind of a thing. Um, and average could go either way. It's just, you know, you're, you're, you're here so you don't get fined kind of a thing. Or <laughs> um, <laughs> you're looking at that, you know, uh, uh, I might be dying a little bit more than I like. So. Uh, I, I think it kind of has to cater to the cop that you're going against. And I think when you see Galio, uh, Galio really doesn't take it mid too often these days or top. Um, you, you see that he's mostly in that support role. Obviously, he can be flexed, um, but you see him definitely more at support. So in that aspect, I, I wish I kind of had either a tank support or a tank jungler in that aspect. So that way we could... See a little bit more like like hey if we had Sejuani like Sejuani could kind of keep would it be having a fast clear like Olaf, but would be able to help in team fights to help lock down people because hey if you could stop that Galio from coming in and taunting people or Shen or uh, you take out uh, Sidra or uh, Senna in that aspect then you're one of the damage people can't do anything uh, you you block out and try to kite back for everyone else. So that's kind of the situation that you're, you're you're looking at. So you want to make sure that you know everyone gets to be able to manage what they need to do and take fights a little bit easier. <clears throat> yeah, and I I also would like to see ISU pick up uh, maybe at least one lane that can fight back because they they had the gangplank kind of uh, just sitting there. Uh, wanting to farm and you had the Lulu just playing to farm right and even the the Kaisa Zillion really weren't able to get any prio so Olaf had free reign over the game uh, and I think if if the Redbirds had you know even one lane that they could say hey you know we can kind of play around this Kindred can actually put some pressure down on uh, it might help them to really fight back because they went so heavy scaling that they just didn't have any tools to prevent the the crash and and fall that ended up happening right and sometimes when you have that crash and fall it's like okay now how do i dig myself out of this and sometimes in these situations it's kind of like this you can't dig yourself out because once you get too far behind it, it's a little bit harder to come back do i think something could have happened yes i think the issue was is because of how EG drafted, it was a little harder for them to die as easily. So because of that, it takes um, a little bit more in that aspect for them to kind of get going. And because Dillian was able to kind of land those stuns um, at the opportune times that he wanted to, uh, you know, every, everyone kind of got, you know, zoned out pretty quick and easy. Like, hey, you know what? You, you got Lulu right here. All right, you're getting taunted and CC'd and you're done. Then it went to the next one, and next one, and next one, and next one, and then it's like, okay, you're running away. Well, son is just gonna snipe you. Like it's it's one of those things that uh, they drafted very well, and I think that uh, easily ISU's comp could have worked. Um, it's just unfortunately the 
route needed to be, like I said, pl- I think played around Kindred a little bit better. Uh, and in that aspect, that's where it kind of was unfortunate in that case because you look at stacks weren't being done. Um, and because of that, she, she falls far behind. I mean, she doesn't have her damage, she doesn't have her range, she doesn't have the attack speed. And there's just so many things that, that you look at that you're like, oh, I, I, I want more out of it, but you can't have more out of it. So, uh, just one of those things that hopefully uh, we'll see more soon. Yeah. And I I also think Evil Genius's comp, I, I said at the start that I thought, you know, they're kind of lacking on damage. But the strength of it is it's really easy to execute. It's really straightforward what you have to do. Mm-hmm. You've got everyone diving in. Everyone's on the same page because everyone's champion wants to do the same thing. So uh, that that really helped them out as well because uh, ISU had a, a difficult comp to make work. They had a bunch of squishy people who had to have good coordination and evil geniuses just didn't have a comp that was going to be super hard to execute on. And that really benefited them once it came to the, some of the skirmishes, some of the 5v5s even. Uh, later into the game exactly and we're getting into the pro draft right now so we're kind of seeing standard bands coming out of both of them uh you get camille and hecarim with the thresh daily coming out of eg so uh it doesn't surprise me here i kind of feel like we're getting similar bands i don't think there's really much going to be different other than maybe they're going to take out maybe shen or galio in that aspect uh maybe we'll see olaf i got there's a shen coming out of eg yeah right now. yeah Shen uh, getting banned by EG and ISU keeping the Camille ban on on Surti there. And there was a Seraphine ban that came out last time. So uh, we'll see if they end up going with the same three bans or not uh, as well here. And ISU is keeping the uh, same three bans. So I wonder if they, they will change up draft at all. Evil Geniuses adjusting their bands a little. They had banned uh, Graves previously, and, and they put in the Olaf ban, saying, we took it, we know the power of it, we're going to get rid of it. But if Olaf's banned, then Graves is now open for the taking. Right, and say you were going to go Graves. I mean, you have Lilia, you have all these other junglers right now that are... Um, and they didn't ban Nidalee either. So you look at, he could have taken Nidalee. He could have taken basically a, a, any of his um, hyperscaling ones that he loves playing. And just, I mean, we look at it this way. Graves is still so good right now. I mean, why would you not take it, essentially, in that case? Um, we see Renekton and Talia has picked up. Oh, oh, oh. That is a, a deadly combo right now. You've got a lot of top lane power combined with Talia that, Really can put down a lot of pressure in the jungle, uh, and and try and fight Graves even. Countering with the Orn as well, so getting the tank, getting the Galio as well. So uh, saying, "Hey, we're not we're not going for the five squishy comp anymore." As he says, uh, laying down the the team fight. Yeah, because they definitely want the team fight. I think they look at it to, you know, the sooner they get to Galio, the more it's taken away from uh, Talia and Renekton because of the fact that if you have Galio on there, you have Talia who could just uh, ride in on her um, uh, wall and just surf over. She could set up a lot for Galio to come in on her or Renekton in that case. And just it's a nice combo between all three. That's just something it's like, it, it's kind of like the Camille, Galio, and Talia combo. Where it's just you just have so much setup, it's so much burst, it's so much I can't handle it because it this is this is why I don't do play by play at that point. <laughs> <laughs> just because too much is going on, you're trying to talk about everything, and yeah, it, it's just not it's not fun to deal with. Um, so yeah, we do, and we do get a setup ban here, okay. So. And and the twisted yeah the twisted fate coming in as the third pick for evil geniuses which is a really scary combo because you've both got CC to set up the Talia to get the knockback and uh, it also says hey you know we're kind of going for a pick comp we're going to be roaming around with TF Talia moving quickly through uh, on on the rocks so 
uh, Evil Genius is also saying, hey, we've got a lot of setup mid lane, banning out the Oriana Victor, uh, the ones who can sit back and stay away from the Twisted Fate. And Evil Genius is also locking in the Samira, so kind of saying, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be running around and and getting picks. Exactly. I mean, when when you're doing that, you basically have a lot of presence, essentially, with TF there going around getting picks. Um, you have Julia, who could definitely follow up and get everything locked up for her um, combo. And then you look at same thing for uh, Renekton. Renekton basically will just help out Talia, very simple and easy. Uh, and Samir is just a nice, uh, safe, easy pickup to deal with a lot of any uh, skill shot based uh, abilities coming at her. So. Yeah, and ISU picking the kind of team fight comp with their first three picks. So end up picking up the Yone for Drew. And I'm a little worried about the Yone here because uh, there's a lot of really easy CC on Evil Genius's side to lock the Yone down and keep him in place. It's going to be difficult to play in the mid lane. If he ever gets stunned by TF, uh, Talia's going to be there to CC him, and if he needs to pop back to E, uh, she can sit there uh, where he is, going to have to snap back to, and it's going to be difficult to play the game. Uh, and then picking up the Ezreal as well, who can sit back a little bit more. So, Yeah, I mean, you, you, that's the big thing you should look at is, you know, you know it's definitely going to be able to be CC'd that little bit more. You look at... Uh, Ezreal needs to play back, which is kind of the comp that I think they need to do bot lane, just for the fact that uh, you have Samira Alistair, which is a really great combo that you just don't kind of want to deal with. So, uh, right away. So, let me... Yeah, and I, I do like the Galia pickup uh, to help match some of the, the picking and roaming that evil geniuses can do with their comp as well yeah i mean the i like both drafts i i i, I like ours a little bit better now uh, than the first one uh just because i feel like we do have that cc we are able to kind of set up a little bit more i i am but am not worried too much on the yone only because of the fact that yes that cc can happen but if Talia's not necessarily being there to kind of help out and get those early kills ahead, as well as trying to snowball lanes for where Yone's at, then I think Yone can still be fine. He just needs to play a little more safe. Uh, just know when to get his shield uh, to pop up and everything and uh, just be able to take trades that are worthwhile and not just taking a trade just because you can kind of a thing. So... Yeah, because if he's not careful, you know, even Alistair can show up and and you can have Yone getting pressured very quickly, very early on. And I, I think if you're ISU, you're trying to take this to the late game where some of Evil Genius's champions fall off a little. Renekton isn't quite doing as much. And you've maybe got the CC to deal with Samira. Because otherwise, Evil Geniuses can once again snowball this game very quickly if ISU isn't careful. Right. I mean, if they're not careful, uh, like you said, they could definitely snowball very quickly and easily. Uh, I look at this draft is just one of those ones that it's a team comp that I love and hate because I love playing it, but I hate going against it. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I think you have some good counters and, and good uh, champions and players coming out of ISU. So even though they lost that first game here, I think they can swing back, uh, definitely take out uh, this game as well as possibly the next game. I think we just kind of have to see how this gets played out. Um, I figure we're going to have another standard five point, you know, from both of them. Just kind of picking out, getting, getting a little poke early. I don't think it's going to be gank central you know coming out of either the the jungle or the um top laner there so uh you know we already talked about yone what do you think about this uh top lane is you're obviously our, our our resident top laner here that does a lot of these matchups i think a little bit better than me uh what do you think about this orin versus renekton 
yeah, th this is definitely a playable lane for Orn, but it's going to be really scary for him when Talia and, and Twisted Fate start getting to slightly higher levels because Orn's going to be okay in the 1v1 to, to some degree. He should be able to survive, but he can't move that quickly to run away. So if Renekton's sitting in lane and then suddenly he's dashing on him and you've got a Twisted Fate showing up, it should be pretty much free kills onto the Orn if they really want to, if evil geniuses want to pressure Orn in the top lane. And there's not going to be a whole lot that Sham Wows uh, can do to prevent dying, really, if they want to put the pressure in the top lane. And so I, I think you're, you're trying to do the best you can early to get beefy for when maybe the dives or the ganks come and you're kind of trying to survive to to some degree and i think you see that in the bot lane as well so i said you know i'm a little worried about yone in the mid lane but i think your other lanes are are trying to play safe so that's going to free graves up to put the the time he might need to spend mid lane to keep drew alive as well and keep him successful Right, and I mean, you look at Graves. Graves is always known for what clearing fast and going and taking enemy camp, uh, enemy camps as well. So because of that, he's gonna be doing that right away. As well as we're gonna see uh, probably ganks, like you said, going to mid lane just because you look at that combo with TF and Talia is it's not fun to go against. Uh, it's obviously doable that you could play around it in different things, um, but I think it's you have to uh, play it right in order to make sure that you're not having to blow a flash or you're not having to blow um, your, your E to go in when they know they're just, you're just going to come back and they can just CC lock you up there. So I think based on that, and like you said with, with uh, Hyper there, Hyper's definitely going to be able to come in, get some damage off, peel back, you know, TF and Talia, so that way Yone can still survive, still be able to be in lane, um, and like I said, they could definitely capitalize on getting kills. I, I don't see it not happening. I, I just kind of have to see how everything plays out in the first place just to see, you know, who's ahead at that point and who takes that little bit better of a trade. Because, like you said, Alistair could roam up at any point. Because uh, I'm thinking when you're looking at Ezreal and Galio here, you're going to get probably get pushed in. And Alistair could just go leave whenever. I mean, he doesn't have to just sit around. You know, all day and everything in lane, he's gonna roam. He's gonna roam, obviously, more than Galio. And once Galio gets six, you'll see him roam that little bit more, just because he can help out at least in the the mid lane. Um, you know, TF's going to another lane, or you know, heaven forbid, um, hold on, uh, anything else happens, um, you know, it it, it should be. Pretty fine and dandy for the most part. I mean, we're looking at... It, it's going to be, I think, a very... Uh, hold on. I'm trying to get everything going. Um, Man, my, my boomer mental star in the show is I'm losing train of thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, I, I'm just looking at that. Um, if you could set up with Galio that little bit more uh, you're, you're going to be able to do it later than what you can do with Alistair Alistair once he's two he can just leave he doesn't have to be there where Galio has to kind of get the six to kind of be having that little bit more pressure you'll have Galio there for, for Twisted Fate maybe maybe not the first time Twisted Fate ults but after that because they'll have a little less in the levels but right. Uh, Drew also also taking the cleanse in this lane, which makes sense. Uh, gives him a little bit more survivability. Hyper hopping over the wall to get an early fight on Talia. Shamwell throws the Q down. Aspect's going to be walking over with the gold card. Drew also pushing up, so I don't think they're going to get anything out of that. Renekton is walking down the lane, chunking out Tomio quite a bit. See if he... I don't think Tomio's going to take a recall and stay healthy enough in the jungle, but does pop a potion early, so... Uh, I don't know if this will make the clear a little, little bit unhealthy. Or he's starting at half health here. Now, uh, something interesting to look into the top lane. I love the unsealed spell book coming out from Orn. 
because if you're taking grasp in this lane there, there's really no way that you're going to be able to properly trade with renekton or, or be aggroing the wave enough to to be procking grasp so the unsealed spell book is really nice i'm not a huge fan of starting refillable the reason people start refillable is because you can buy the refillable and then once you get a little bit of gold you can build your doron shield in lane and then you end up having a refillable instead of putting money into the potions the issue with that is if renekton walks up he can take advantage of orn having no stats yet and you kind of lose a lot of pressure in the lane by starting the refillable instead so we've got a little bit of trading in the bot lane, and I think uh, you're actually seeing Ezreal and Galio trying to get the push here, and they hit level two first. Nausicaa ease in, and they take down Alistair already, and you can see him, Tomio missing the flash as Hyper invades him. The already low health from that early level one, Hyper going down to Aspect though, so the junglers get traded. You've got early fighting in the bot lane, Alistair going down to Disconnector and Nausicaa, it's a nice play by them saying, hey, uh, we don't necessarily know if we're an advantage in the Samira Alistair lane, but if we hit level two first, we're going all in. And I didn't quite catch what happened in the jungle, but it looked like Graves uh, Hyper taking his red buff and then hopping over to look for Talia, who was already low health, and she actually misses the flash of the wall. So uh, early advantage to ISU, which is, is really great there. Uh, although Drew is going to have to deal with, I think, the double buffs on T-Up as well. <laughs> Yeah, not something you necessarily want to have happen when you do trade your jungler is having those buffs go on to TF, who is someone that is definitely, like you said, going to be able to uh, possibly start pushing him out of lane, which he did here. He had to take that uh, recall there, and uh, is going to be able to kind of stay in lane that little bit longer. Uh, we see junglers again are coming back at each other. <laughs> they, are, they are still fighting. Tomia looking for the invade. Uh, he's not able to pick up the blue. Uh, Hyper actually gets the blue and hops over the wall looking for more. He has a blue to the red buff of the Talia, so the, the junglers are still fighting it out. And uh, almost looking for a dive. Hyper's still here. Oh, oh no. Have Aspect TPing to the minion, but... If Graves is here, I don't think they're going to be able to do this. And you have ShamWow taking down Surti, still living. Tomio's tanking the turret, goes down as well. And that's a one for two. And TF has to burn his TP as well for that play as Drew sits mid lane. And uh, while Aspect has picked up two kills, Drew is getting a pretty big CS lead. The, that wave's crashing in. And I, I don't know if they thought Graves had backed already or, or what, because... That's a, a scary dive to go for. Orn was not super low. And and really, I think that has to favor ISU once again. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think it goes to ISU for the fact that even though you get the kill, like you said, I, I, oh, I'm going to be quiet now. We get a big game coming in. <laughs> yeah, we've got Tomio still putting down the pressure. <laughs> uh, Nausicaa is able to taunt and flash out so staying safe and that kind of gives hyper a little bit of time to catch back up in cs and looks like talia might be starting the dragon hyper's pinging for help in the the river there and you've got nausicaa going back so i'm not sure any fight's gonna go down so we're gonna kind of go back to back to some farming here fight in the top lane shamwow's already hit six thirty goes in and is down a level Shamwow tries to take the fight, but isn't quite going to have enough damage to actually get the kill down, and, and is now down his ult, actually. So that might have been one where if he waits just a little, swap over with the Unsealed Spellbook to Ignite, and he might actually have some kill pressure there. And, yeah, and Surdy, Surdy still knows he has TP as well, so uh, I think he's, he's in an unhappy position here. Drew looking... Go on Aspect, and you have Galio coming from the top side there. I didn't see Galio sneak around, but Drew's able to pick up a kill. Mist goes in for the flash on Disconnector. Tomio once again ganking Hyper's there, but looks like that's going to be Disconnector falling to Shiro. Uh, Hyper was there, but wasn't quite able to help Disconnector out. So we've got, we've got aggression on all three sides of the map here. Top mid bot, and, and these teams are just keeping things rolling. Yeah, I mean, this is the games you want to cast, is all these bloodbath games. Because 
you're you're having pressure and fights all over the map, which makes the game even more fun, and and you love it and appreciate it that little bit more. Where it's like, all right, you know, if I get a stale LCK game, you know, where I we only have a few kills in the beginning, we farm for the rest of like 20, 30 minutes, and then oh hey, we have two big fights and then we're done. Uh, you know, this is kind of like that that nice aspect of like, hey, you know, we get to see. Um, uh, Nasuka roamed the room first, but, you know, he's making me eat my words. So, I can live with that a little bit. You know, he, yeah, he's getting himself a little bit ahead there, too. <clears throat> uh, fantastic roam timing from Nasuka, because Drew had, had hit six pretty recently there, and, and was able to get Aspect, who was 2-0 and o at the time, and, and Drew's building up a big CS lead. They were able to punish Nasuka going to mid lane and getting a kill on Disconnector, though. Uh, that said, Disconnector off that first kill early on had been able to pick up uh, a tier and a cull though. So he had really gotten a nice buy off. Yeah, I mean, when you get a nice buy like that, you, you can't beat it. I mean, oh, we're seeing just simple <laughs> trades up here. But the, yeah, the normal the trades. The are beating each other up still, but not really accomplishing anything. And, and you see Orin is swapped to the exhaust. So it says either if you're thinking of diving me or or something like that, I'm not going to make it easy. And he's pulling the wave. Now they, they are going for the dragon here. So evil geniuses are going to be able to pick up the early early cloud, I think. And there's really no reason for ISU to be contesting the cloud dragon. And Talia are in. I don't know if they thought they could get to Drew. Drew and Hyper are sitting on a ward, though. And Drew goes in with the ult. Surdy roaming down already. He has Pryo in the Orn. Aspect flashes over, looking for the kill, but gets uh, immediately killed. Drew flashes onto Tomi as well, and Sham Wow's in a one v one with Surdy. As Miss tries to take a back in the bush, there uh, doesn't look like he's gonna be helping Surdy in any way. And and there goes Alistair taking his back off as Surdy gets chased through the jungle, trying to walk out here. Dodges the E knockup, still has another part of his E, gets the kill on Sham. Wow, so uh, gonna be going down to Hyper, but nice trade there as he was all but doomed to die. So nice uh, trying to make the best of your situation there, but we are still getting fighting uh, non stop here, which is really helping Drew get fed in the mid lane as well. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, the more Drew gets fed, the better off they're going to be. Um, especially with team fights, because even though... Oh, no. Uh, yeah, and uh, there goes Hyper getting the shutdown, or uh, Surdy getting the shutdown on Hyper. So <laughs> he had finished his Gale Force, thought he could, could do that, and <laughs> was not quite strong enough. Yeah, I think you have to respect the fact that one, you probably have a TP coming out of either uh, Aspect, or you have something coming out of uh, Zerdy there. And because of that, you, you don't want to take any of those fights that necessarily are going to put you in a bad situation. Um, just because, you know, Shamba wasn't there to help out Hyper in that case. Um, he already backed and was coming back. So the unfortunate thing there is, I don't know, Zerdy made the better move of trying to capitalize taking the TP to the ward and, you know, trade it out that, just that little bit better. Yeah, and I, I think if you're ISU, you, you can recognize that... Ooh, and Nasuka <laughs> alting in and Hyper takes down Tomi. I, I'm not sure how he got himself in that position. Uh, I was saying, if you're ISU, you can recognize you're probably outscaling evil geniuses anyways. So you've got this lead. No need to do anything crazy. If you kind of keep playing it out how you are, take things a little slower, it's going to be really hard for evil geniuses to get back in the game. And, and we just saw that as Tomio keeps feeling pressured to go for things. Aspect trying to alt down onto Disconnector, but Disconnector doesn't have to use any sums and is able to walk out as Nausicaa walking back in the lane. So, and, and you keep seeing Aspect has been roaming, roaming, roaming. And it is getting him behind as Drew just keeps sitting in the mid lane, shoving those waves in a 30 CS lead. And, and once again, is crashing a wave in. So uh, Aspect getting the early two kills, but has not been successful after that. Yeah, I mean, getting those two kills, I mean, he was okay and doing all right. And after that, I mean, you know, 
when you're getting those a little bit better, nicer ganks and getting off that raw damage like we're seeing right now. Yeah, and Drew going in and finds himself in a 1v3 as Surdy roams down and is able to pick up Drew. So it was a nice start to the play, and we've got a fight bot lane as well. Alistair pops the ult. Samir trying to go in. The TP coming in from Orn. As the fight looks over, Orn pops the R. Gets knocked by, by Alistair back into his ult, so he's still able to use it. And it looks like Tomi oh, was able to take down Hyper, who wanted the kill in the mid lane. Went in 1v2 and, and dies. So we are once again seeing fights break out in multiple parts of the rift here. Uh, some favoring ISU and some favoring evil geniuses. Shira, oh, trying trying to keep pressuring and, and gets the backstop on Sham Wow. So Sturdy's gonna be able to keep pressuring top wave and Talia's throwing down the herald. So uh, Hyper kind of getting punished for trying to make the play mid lane here, as evil geniuses is able to punish across the map as both teams make plays. Yeah, I think the big thing was for Hyper. Hyper was trying to get to that fight for that 1v3 with uh, Drew Dozer there. And, and the problem was it's because he was so far on the bot side there, he couldn't get over in time to that top side to help him out and everything. So he was just trying to come to lane, try to defend, and you know, they just kind of took him out quick and clean and easy. I mean, he thought, hey, you know, one was very low, the other is half health, or three quarters health. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll take him out and no problem or anything. And because, you know, I'm, I'm brave. I can handle this like he's handling it right now. And we're still looking to be aggressive, but whole team is there. Tomio already there. Aspects was looking for Hyper, who is low, and and kind of gets cut off from the side there. Mist still going in. This is an awkward fight with the dragon here, and ISU just decides to start the dragon as Surdy pops the ult, hops in. Galio pops the ult as well, taking down Hyper, so there's no junglers here to actually smite the dragon. It does go over to Disconnector for ISU. Samira popping the ult and is able to take down Galio. And the fight is a one, 2v3, and Drew trying to go in on Shiro, doesn't quite manage to get it taken down. That's a second Samira R, and that is a quadra kill going over for Samira in, in kind of an awkward fight that <laughs> led to them taking the dragon down and, and Samira getting the best of that fight. And, and that was really what Evil Genius's comp was looking for, kind of that skirmishy fight where ISU couldn't get a clear 5v5 engagement. Right, and, and sometimes when you have those fights in the river there, or I should say on uh, the red side there, on the uh, it's a blue golem camp there, I mean, you look at that, hey, you know what, 2v1 there, all right, you know, it's fine, it's Graves. You know, you, you stack up your E on everyone um, there, you know, you, you can handle a little bit more trades and different things, and then... Once you kind of realize, all right, it's becoming a 1v3. Let's get out of here a little bit. We need to back up. My team's coming. And everyone else is coming. You know, let, let's, let's get ourselves back into the pit here. Because no matter what, I can survive that little bit longer if I do that. And and just sustain that little bit better. Plus, you look at Drew Dozer had definitely uh, enough CC and kills going on to people. As well as everyone else kind of was just managing what they needed to do. But unfortunately, it's Samira. And when you get two Samira ultimates going on, I'm in a fight. I don't like saying it, but it's all oh, over. Shiro walks in, actually, and almost takes down Disconnector. Hyper also trying to run away. And it doesn't look like anyone's going to go down here. Uh, I, I think that last big fight showed the one weakness of ISU's draft is... And it looks like Shamwell and Hyper are kind of getting hunted here. They don't have any wards down, but they were pushing up for that turret. I'm not sure totally why. Orin pops the R. Gets CC'd, but still able to use it. And Hyper going back in on Aspect. And this is a 2v3 with the uh, Drew able to cancel the TP of Surdy. So this, this fight's still going on, but there's no backup coming in for ISU. And, and there's Hyper going down. So I, I think... Shamwell and Shamwell and Hyper played it well, but uh, they had no assistance and really had gotten caught out there. So nice TP cancel by Drew, but but they were just out of position uh, today. And and I was saying, I, I think you're seeing the one weakness of ISU's comp is they don't have any CC to really stop the Samira R. If Galio has already taunted, 
<laughs> it takes Orin a while to get his CC off, and, and even Drew doesn't have an immediate CC. Samira's gonna be running through in these team fights. Right, because like you said, Drew, Drew doesn't have immediate, uh, his ult is still on a delay, you know, from once casted. Um, you look at, you still have to build up your Q in order to get that stack to basically be able to have that knock up. Uh, you also have to land it, you know, kind of perfectly in that situation because Shiro's going to be moving around. You know, it, 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 even though he's going to be having slow move speed, uh, you know, it, it's not going to be necessarily the way that you kind of want it to go. And Drew going in on Shiro gets the perfect knock up in the alt. I don't know if he quite got enough damage to get through the shield though. A uh, nice engagement on to Samira, but not quite able to take her down as Alistair's there as well with the exhaust. Uh, I do like them looking for engagements onto that. Samira has a big shutdown. Uh, something I'd like to see come through is Disconnector picked up that Executioners. And some of the other members of ISU might need to pick up something like that and get a Bramble and Orn. Because... Uh, You've got Renekton, you've got Samira, where a lot of their power is coming through from that healing. Exactly. I mean, you, you definitely want to get those um, Grievous Wounds coming out for the fact that the sooner you can get it, the little bit better. Uh, you know, whether it's you see it coming out on Yon here, um, we already have it on uh, Ezreal, you know, coming out of Redbirds. Oh, oh. And there's a pause, so... The top yeah. laner DC'd out of uh, EG, so 30 DC'd. So 30, 30 <laughs> DC'd, and, and we were actually, I think there were... I saw some pings start coming down down on the dragon here, so we might be getting a, a fight looking forward here. Might see Tomio pop the Herald a little bit before uh, the dragon comes down, and I think it's 30 seconds here. Uh, and, and we'll see if maybe ISU can get the 5v5 they want. I think they can. I think the, the way you have to do it is make sure that it, it's set up in the proper space. Because if you can get it in a corridor, it's great but bad at the same time. Because it's great that you could get uh, Hyper and Shamwow and everyone else doing a lot of damage. Um, ooh. Aspect. Alt in there to try to get disconnector, but Tomio found himself really low and both Hyper and Grit. Orn throw the alt out. Galia throwing the alt down as well. You've already lost Tomio. Surdy in the back line takes down Hyper, pops the alt. Triple kill for Surdy running through ISU. Shamwell and Drew still alive. Nothing but trying to run through that quadra kill for Surdy. Uh, I didn't even entirely see what happened. Drew. Seeing if he can give Surdy the pentakill. Says, come and get it. Shield bow popped. And that's the pentakill for Surdy. Uh, pops over the raptor wall. And, and that was not the fight that ISU wanted. No, I mean, it, it, it's not the fight. I mean, it's great to see a penna, especially in a game. But when you, you're looking at everything there, the problem with the corridor, um, what I was saying was basically, um, it sets up perfectly for Shiro. And... Um, me because of that you know when you look at those two their champions are just perfect for corridors but you look at i know it's easier for true dozer to set up something you have hyper and shamwow being able to do a lot of damage nasca can just come in at any point and everything like that so that's kind of the the situation that you're looking at is okay can can we get that damage out in cc the way we want or are we kind of using it all at once the problem is, is sometimes with the comp that ice is running you kind of use it all at once because it's like, okay, uh, you got Orn Ultimate that you want to make sure it gets out. You have uh, uh, Yon's Ultimate, you know, that you want to kind of layer with it, as well as getting the um, Ultimate out of Galio there. So, ISU actually were starting up the Baron. Mist walks in to see the CC. Shira trying to go in, pops the R. And Drew's able to get an ult on to Shira, taking down Samira. TP coming in for Orn is. TF looks to walk up with his ult. Pops the ult, and Drew doesn't really have anything left. He does have shield bow available. Aspect getting the ult onto Disconnector, and Mist is able to follow him up. And this might be ISU going down, as they they didn't really want to re-engage that fight, uh, even though they started Baron, and it was kind of promising. Started popping the ult, and it looks like uh, evil geniuses are just going to take down this Baron now. 
Piper still looking for a potential steal. They don't have any wards on him until he walks around the corner now. And I think you're going to see Sardi go over the wall here. And, and that's just Hyper going down. Aspect's able to get the card over the wall and another double kill for Sardi. And, and this Renekton is just running over the game. Uh, ISU's finding it really difficult to deal with it. And Disconnector's able to take down uh, Aspect. Not quite able to steal the Baron though. And, and more kills going over to e evil geniuses. You know, he just didn't expect it there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you look at it that that was a fight that, I mean, again, I, 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 if I could always go better for either side. But you look at that, basically, EG's com um, comp is just running the way that they wanted to. They're running it that a little bit easier and is able to get these stuns down. They're able to get the CC out with the damage. I mean, look at Sardi. Sardi's 11, 2, and 6, and he pretty much has three full items. He's got the steel caps and is building towards his next one already. Like, you look at the, the raw power and damage coming out of... Oh, no. Yeah, and we said at the start, uh, Oren's going to find himself difficult to get out of these ganks. I think he has Ghost from the Unsealed Spellbooks. And Drew going in. Galio popping the ult. Hero's able to walk out. Chilbo gets pop 30 TPs as well. Has a GA now. And I'm a little worried for ISU here. I think they need to run. They don't have their Orn. Orn is walking up with his ult though, if they're able to turn this around. Popping it, getting it down the line, but... And you see the power of the Samira as she's able to stop the Ornar actually. And Evil Geniuses have Baron to keep pushing here. So... Uh, I, I don't know if they're going to be able to end the game or not. You've got 30 second timer on Disconnector, uh, but they'll definitely be able to pick up a, an inhibitor here. Yeah, Evil Geniuses is definitely just playing the way that they need to. I mean, you look at, yes, you want to burst down Shiro there, simple and easy, but Shiro is just one of those, uh, playing one of those champions that can't die as easily at this point right now. I mean, he's 7, 2, and 6. He's got Chill Bow. He's got Collector. He's got Steel Caps. The Steel Caps are protecting him that little bit more from this 80 kind of heavy team that you can't really be able to trade into as much damage right away. So uh, when you look at that and you look at the uh, same thing with Sardi. Sardi, Sardi's fed. Sardi, Sardi's fed so hard that when you look at that uh, Play of the Rune King damage coming out with an Empowered W, you're getting four hits out. It's crazy. When you're doing that, and then you have Gorge Ranker on top of that, just to keep you sustained, on top of Cold Meek. I, I mean, come on, like it's one of those sustained things that you hate seeing, but it's just a great thing to go on for him and everything. Yeah, and it's making it difficult for ISU to find any kills. They do catch Thirty out. Yeah, pops the stopwatch. Also has a GA, and Alistair had backed already. Uh, we'll see if they have the damage to finish it off. And you were talking about sustain. Uh, no one going down. Finally popped the GA. Samira gets taken down by Disconnector, but everyone else is falling. Shamwop finally shows up to the fight, doesn't have his ult available, and and while there are no more Baron minions, this might just be the game. Inhibitor minions walking down. And you saw, uh, I said they don't have, ISC doesn't have a ton of CC for Samira. It's true for Renekton as well. Renekton was running over those fights early game as there was no way to stop him from getting off uh, the carries of ISU and Nausicaa looking to defend here. <laughs> this pops him back into the base. As this is our game. Hyper going in, doing his best to defend. Disconnector comes up and that's the Nexus falling though and, and that's Evil Genius is taking the second game. Yeah, uh, a great job to Evil Geniuses there. And they definitely uh, came up with the win with the better uh, execution of their comp. I, I just look at um, both comps were still good. And everyone was playing very hard and very simple and easy, you know, on both sides. It's just, unfortunately, uh, Cerny just kind of got ahead for the fact that Renekton's one of those champions that, like I said, you, you have that sustain there from two items, your abilities... And you could just put out raw damage with your W when it's empowered because of Blade of the Rune King. It, it's just one of those annoying things that, as someone who does love playing top lane, I hate going against it. Uh, but it's one of those things that it's also nice to see. Uh, because you look at Renekton's one of those ones that, uh, 
may not be like his brother, who doesn't see quality of um, quality time ever in any pro league aspect. Uh, but <laughs> you definitely see Redacted up there being up top, just with a little bit nicer, better kit, and you know, with the sustain. I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, this is kind of that sustain meta coming out for uh, League of Legends with these patches, with these new items. 